In case you didn't know it, a little bit down the road from the Beargrass Greenway is another gym in the 9th District. I'm Kyle. I'm Samantha. We represent the 9th District. Now here there's a great treasure over here in Clifton, the community garden. Why don't you come and listen? Welcome to the Clifton Community Garden on the grounds of Mercy Sacred Heart Village on Payne Street. It's been years in the making, but 2009 was their first official growing season. Mike, if you could tell us how you got the Clifton Community Garden, Garden started, and in particular about the raised beds. Well, this is a four acre piece of land that Sacred Heart, Mercy Sacred Heart Village owns, and we approached Mercy Sacred Heart Village and asked if we could use part of their open field as a community garden. We said, well, show us what you've got in mind. And um, so that began um, uh, this adventure that we've all gotten involved in. One of the things that amazes me is what we've been able to accomplish simply by being able to say yes. The garden was designed to be an outdoor classroom for folks to learn about gardening, sustainability, and the environment. As a part of the gardens, the Clifton Community Council contracted with Youth Build of Louisville to construct 16 wheelchair accessible raised beds. We, the Clifton Community Council, built two of them one time and realized we didn't know what the heck we were doing. And with all of our best intentions, we did a lousy job. So we reached out to Youth Build Louisville. Youth Build Louisville is a nonprofit. They teach young people between 16 and 24 the construction trade. These are, are young people that, that may not have done real well in school mm -hmm. or they may not be real focused. Mm -hmm. So they got this great program. So we reached out and, and asked if they would help us build our raised garden beds. Anyone is welcome to use the beds. They're free and doled out on a first come, first serve basis. About 25 people had plots this year. This year our garden was kind of a fun thing. I hadn't planted a garden in a long time. Patreon Virginia shared one of those raised garden beds. I don't have room at home. I don't have much sunshine at home. So it was kind of fun. I had everything from some flowers to white pumpkins to tomatoes, uh, sweet peas. This season's been so successful they're even planning to have Youth Build make another eight beds for this next year's growing season. They would come and they would talk to each other and get to know each other mm -hmm. and it's been very successful. UPS has given us a grant for $5,000 so we can purchase more raised garden beds from, from Youth Build Louisville. Conserving resources is important to this group of gardeners. So in order to water their plants, a system was set up to collect rainwater from neighboring homes and rain barrels. We're building a passive water filtration system. And if you notice, our, our garden is on a slope. And across the street, we've got houses that are higher than us. And one of our plans is to, one of the houses across the street, they're going to let us hook up to their downspouts. And we're going to share water. We're going to have water harvesting for the community garden. One water barrel will be for their use, and one water barrel will be for our use. It's easy to do, hook up your, your downspouts to a water barrel. And, and instead of having going down the combined sewer system to utilize it for your own yard or harvest it for some the other useful uh, activity. But the garden offers more than just flowers and veggies. It's also home to award-winning bees. That is some dark, rich honey right there. And that is their food stores. That is what they live on all winter long because they do not hibernate. They stay active in the hive all winter. And they need, for this climate, they need about 70 pounds of honey in order to live through the winter. Their first ever yield of honey won them a blue ribbon at the 2009 Kentucky State Fair. We entered four pounds in the State Fair and we ended up uh, taking first place getting a blue ribbon in our category which was light amber honey and so we were really excited about that. Anyone's welcome to come and watch as they tend their hives or even join in on the process. Every time we get ready to inspect the hives, uh, we send out an email and we ask anybody who wants to come to anybody who wants to help volunteer or be a part of it, we always ask them, anybody who wants to show up. And it's not necessarily, they don't have to get in the hives if they don't want to, they can actually just stand out there and watch. Many groups and organizations have supported the garden and helped it to succeed. One local business has an especially symbiotic relationship with the garden. 
When I was looking to source a local honey, then I really couldn't get any more local than two blocks from my shop. Red Hot Roasters, a drive through organic coffee shop on Payne and Lexington Road, brings in their coffee grounds to be used in the garden's compost. And in exchange, they get some of the local honey, which is used to make their coffee drinks. Not only does it help my business um, be sustainable, which is something that's really important to be a part of the neighborhood, um, these award-winning bees donate some honey that they get nectar from the flowers that had the fertilizer that were my compost grounds and I use that back in my shop and I make um, a local honey latte with it that has a little cinnamon, steamed milk and espresso. Then I also use that for, for teas and other, um, other honey flavorings. So you can see this space is much more than just a community garden. The bounty is great and they celebrate that with an annual harvest fest in October. The second weekend of October, we've declared uh, to be our Clifton Community Harvest Festival. We just invite everybody to come, the gardeners, the neighbors. We've got neighborhood musicians that, that play. So we've had people that donated food, uh, and then we had vendors come just to show, show what they do, and, and uh, it was just a wonderful day. Yeah, I remember um, I actually was able to come this year, and I was just surprised. While it was a laid-back uh, gathering, it was uh, so welcoming and so inviting. And, you know, it just felt like this is where you wanted to be on that Sunday afternoon. But more importantly, this space creates a sense of community by bringing together folks of all ages and backgrounds. Neighbors, businesses, and Louisvillians are creating a sustainable model for other neighborhoods. This is our little piece of paradise set in an urban landscape. If you want to learn more about these initiatives or to volunteer, please call my office at 574-1109.